Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to begin this afternoon's program. My name is Scott Schulich. I'm an associate of the Ursulines, and I've been invited to be your master of ceremonies today. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the General Superior of the Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown, Sister Mary McCormick. Thank you, Scott. And uh, again, thanks to all of you for coming this evening. As I said before, you honor us by your presence. We wanted to start with our family and friends, and that's why you're here tonight, uh, to begin this celebration of 150 years. If you saw us walking in, you said to yourselves, they look pretty good for 150. <laughs> Even though we hobble a little and uh, some of us need little assistance in our walking, um, I, I think we still do pretty well. As the bishop mentioned, most of us are still very much involved in some form of ministry, some form of reaching out to others, and uh, that has been the hallmark of our lives. So this is a night of celebration and of, of uh, great joy for us, and we're glad that you can join us for that. I'm going to ask Monsignor Zura to come forward now and to lead us in grace as uh, we prepare for dinner. If we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, a spirit of generosity by following God's call that taught through the example of Saint Angela Marici that each and every one of us will be humble in our undertakings. Doing your will is what we are all about. We ask that your blessings be upon each of our tables as we celebrate in a spirit of thanksgiving the work of the Urson sisters and their associates. That by sharing this meal, we will be strengthened in what we are called to do and who we are called to be. And in the words of Saint Angela, may we be ready to do your will and not only talk about your will. We make our prayer through Christ the Lord. I first encountered the Ursuline sisters when I met Sister Regina Rogers at St. Brendan School in a nondescript room where she registered me to attend Ursuline High School. That was 1986. Little did I think 37 years later I'd be here today standing before you and being asked to give the toast for the 150th anniversary. So since I come from Ursuline High School, we have a tradition of standing for certain things. So if you are able, I'm going to ask you all to stand and whether you're able to stand or not, raise your glass to the Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown, who begin their 150th year of ministry in the Mahoning Valley, living in harmony, united together, all of one heart and one will, bound together by the bond of charity, esteeming each other, helping each other, bearing with each other in Jesus Christ. To the ministries they have created through the charism of St. Angela Marici, shared with their associates and the community at large, living the Beatitudes each day by their dynamic example. To all of us whose lives have been enriched by this remarkable legacy, that they, the Ursulines, who instruct many unto justice, will shine like stars for all eternity. Soli Deo Gloria.
we're really excited about sharing this video about the Ursulines legacy here in Youngstown. The Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown came to Youngstown 150 years ago. On the one hand, they wanted to do what Christians had always done, be disciples of Jesus, but they were also followers of St. Angela, daughters of St. Angela Marici. St. Angela worked at a time similar to ours. There was war, women were not given equal opportunity, so she just lived ordinary life of her time and brought prayer and action to those most in need. St. Angela, during her lifetime, faced many obstacles in northern Italy due to invasions, war, disease, but God gave her a charism that she was able to to incorporate and invite people. Now, how you know it's unique is that here we are this many years later, centuries later, referring to her charism, looking at her readings, looking at her counsels, and drawing strength from that. So for probably a good part of our history, we were teachers in Catholic elementary schools, but like people of Youngstown, wherever there was a challenge, they responded to that. There's this special resilience that people from Youngstown, Ohio have. And actually, there is a woman who has done research. Her name is Angela. Duckworth. She's done research on the word grit. And when I think of that, I think of resilience. And I believe that's what any organization, but a particular the Ursuline Sisters. It's not just, oh, there's some sisters and they maybe taught you and your grandfather and you know in grade school. It's what's going on now. I think it's important that people realize how much the Ursuline Sisters have done and that we plan to continue doing this work for generations. It's back to that servitude or being able to serve others and being able to talk to a family that that's been through the Beatitude House program and hear about the impact that it made on their lives. So, you know, not just the impact it made for mom, but also what she's now able to teach her children so that maybe generational cycles of poverty can change. In 1997, I joined a missionary project with four other Ursuline sisters, and we lived at the border in Brownsville, Texas, and we worked in Matamoros, Mexico. I returned here in 2007, and at that time, Sister Patricia had opened Potter's Wheel which was for education for women who needed a second chance. There was tutoring, GED, citizenship prep. So an English class was a perfect fit. I have a couple of friends. When I come here to Ohio, she talked to me about uh, Sister Norma. She invited to me to bring me to this place. I have a lot of uh, English class over here. I, don't, I know how to read. I understand more than before. My son's so excited. I say, Mama, this is the best I have it. and this, this program over here in Ohio. I feel so happy and I feel like I want to continue to do here. In the 1990s, there was no longer a need for us to be teaching in the schools. And we started talking about if Angela were alive, where would she tell us to go? And all of us had a different experience with a person with AIDS. No one was doing anything as far as we knew. And so we started investigating what was happening in the Youngstown area. We called all around the country. And one of the sisters that was working with us said, you know, Programs work best when you meet the needs of the people in your area. You need to speak to what the people here need. And I think that was part of our success because we kept going back to the HIV community and saying, what do you need? How can we help you? Can we do this? In Scholars, we work with low-income college students. In Immigrant Outreach, we work with families that have immigrated here from all over the world. And then in our children's program, it encompasses every child in all of our ministries. The sisters, from the ones I've worked with, but also know about their mission, what I've read about, even the history of the Arizona Sisters, it's always about serving the families. And I feel like our programs really try and take that on. So it's never, you know, judgment or anything like that. It's about, you know, being compassionate humans to other human beings. You know, if we look back in history, and the Ursuline Sisters being in Youngstown, 150 years, the impact that they have had educating thousands and thousands of Mahoning Valley students in their faith, but also in English and math and reading and, and all the other things that go along with a child's education. I went to St. Charles grade school and Carnamuni High School and had the Ursuline nuns uh, as part of our teachers uh, all those uh, 12 years. And my wife and I have been seeing what the Beatitude has done and what some of the Ursuline other ministries have accomplished. And, you know, we're firm believers that, you know, you 
really fight poverty one person at a time, and that, that's what the ministries that the Ursulines provide really do. Well, certainly, I had an opportunity to work with several sisters at Ursuline High School, and I found that Ursuline, the philosophy of the sisters, still resonates in the high school through its principal administration and staff. They are very enabling and help bring people forward in their lives, in their education, and in their ministry. The Ursuline Sisters Mission was created to allow the lay leadership that had been developing in all of our ministries to continue in the legacy of the Ursuline Sisters. And it's guided by the vision that they've set for us going forward and by the values that they've lived for so many years. So I think they've done a good job of planning for the future, and I think that's really what part of their mission has to be, is how do they keep their missions going when you know they become fewer and fewer. St. Angela Marici, as she was moving on and she was passing on the order to the other daughters, basically she said, change, look forward. And I think the Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown and their forward thinking, including the Attitude House, the HIV AIDS ministry, the housing projects that we're, we're working on, all of those things relate to what St. Angela did in her time. I continue to find a lot of meaning and fulfillment in this way of life. It's really a way of life where you have so many opportunities to love and reach out and respond to people. And this is the challenge for every Christian. Imitate Jesus to live the way Jesus lived, but to do it in your own time and your own culture. For those who continue to adopt the mission of Angela and the mission of the Ursulines is to just stay aware of what the world is saying to them. We have a lot of people, young people, middle-aged people, older people who are inspired by the story of Jesus, inspired by the story of St. Angela, and inspired by the story of the Ursuline Sisters, and say, yeah, I want to be part of that mission. And so the ministries continue to provide for the needs of people and they continue to thrive. They are visionaries, I think. You know, I could be putting out pretty big fires and other days it may be very mundane work, but I never leave here. I never go to bed at night not feeling like I've contributed. I was in the era where we had 200, 300 Ursuline sisters. That is not the case now. Does that diminish the mission? Absolutely not. What it does is force us, actually force us, to sort, not reinvent ourselves, but to reposition ourselves in a place where we still do honor that mission, just in a different way. We'll call Sister Mary back up for some remarks for all of us. Thanks again, Scott, and uh, again, thank you to all of you. My cousin Frank was saying that he hoped I was going to talk for an hour, but I assured him, no, 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 I, I, I promise I won't do that. This past week, uh, I was at a meeting in Pittsburgh, and it, I'm on a committee that I meet with people occasionally. You know, so over the last 10 years or so, uh, there was a colleague with whom I was working on different projects. Anyways, I'm at this meeting, and what I learned is that this past summer, she had a really significant health issue. And uh, this health issue has literally changed her life forever moving forward. So one of the other people who was talking to me about it said, you know, this is a really, really sad situation. She said this woman uh, never married. She has no children. Her parents are deceased. She has one brother but they've never been particularly close. And as she was concluding the story, she said to me, keep her in your prayers. Here's a woman who's very much alone in the world. Here's a woman who's very much alone in the world. I, I gotta tell you, my heart aches for her. As we're here this evening, one of the things that we're grateful for is that we have each other. We are family. We are friends. We're associates. And it just stands in such contrast to those who live very much alone in the world. In a way, religious life in general, 
and the Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown in particular, have spent much of their lives, and the whole purpose of religious life is to help people find purpose and a life of faith and a community in which they can live their lives. That way, at least some other people won't have to be very much alone in the world. St. Angela Marici, in her lifetime, sought out young women who were ostracized by society, people who had suffered uh, because of war, because of domestic violence, because of sexual, um, sexual violence to them. And she helped to reach out to them so that they too could find a better life. They could find a purpose and meaning in life. They could find a community of faith and a people with whom they could share love. As we think about what Ursulans have done ever since then, it is kind of a variation of the same thing. When Mother Teresa Foley and Sister Angela Brown came to Youngstown in 1874, they were coming at the invitation of the pastor of St. Columba, but they came with a desire to reach out to the immigrant families that were here to help them find a meaning and a purpose in life, to help them find faith and a people with whom they could share life and love. As increasing numbers of people came and immigrants came to Youngstown as the dawn of the 20th century came upon us, we found new immigrant groups. And the Ursuline sisters moved to new parishes with new language groups to again help them find purpose and meaning in life, to find faith and a community in which to share love. By the time the community celebrated its 100th anniversary, and there might be some of you in this room right now who were there at that point. When we celebrated that in 1974, the Catholic schools in our area had pretty much uh, come under not only the leadership of religious, but a well-qualified group of lay women mostly who could be teachers and administrators in the schools. Our Ursuline sisters then began to minister in a variety of other ways. There were lots of opportunities in the parish, and there were new things. You know, today we kind of take them for granted, but there were opportunities to help in the diocesan office, in a variety of other ministries, healthcare ministry, as chaplains, as social workers, and even though that wasn't common for us as Ursulines, it was a way that the people in our area needed someone to reach out. By the 1990s, the Ursuline sisters reached out to homeless women and their dependent children. Thus began Beatitude House. In that same decade, a new infectious disease created a whole new generation of people who were kind of living with the kind of uh, trauma that perhaps biblical lepers had lived with, being outcast, others afraid to be near them. The Ursuline sisters reached out to that community, found ways to minister to them, found ways to invite them into a community of love, a community of faith, a place where they could find meaning and purpose in life. When I began my term as superior in 2014, most of our ministries were still uh, headed by Ursuline sisters. But in very short order, those ministries have been uh, now under the leadership of very capable lay leaders. And the whole project of Ursuline sisters' mission is now headed by uh, Bridget Kennedy, who serves with us in many ways as the leader of that whole operation. At this point in our history, there are 27 Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown. All but two of us are here this evening, and the two who are not here could not be here because of health issues themselves. Our median age is 80. 
Nevertheless, we still embody now what Ursuline sisters have always been from the beginning and take on the hallmarks that have marked our lives ever since we've been here in Youngstown. We have a way of networking with others. We have fostered and nurtured strong relationships among family, friends, associates, and coworkers. And we have been able to hand on the gift, hand on the charism of the gospel and of St. Angela Marici. When each Ursuline sister professed her vows, however long ago that was, she promised to give the whole of her life to poverty, chastity, and obedience. You saw that one stained glass window that had those three vows on it. Another way to say that today is to say that each Ursuline sister has promised to love, to serve, and to share with God's people the gifts that she has been given. Now, it doesn't take an academic to say that our world has changed in profound ways in our lifetimes. And we know, too, that this pattern of rapid change is only going to continue. The task before us is the task that has been part of the life of every single person since the beginning of time, and especially for those of us who call ourselves Christian. Our task is to live well and to live fully the life that God gave us, to share the gifts that God has given us, and to accompany one another along the way. I mentioned at the end of Mass that Catholics have always been aware of this great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us and are still with us. In my conversations with many of you this evening, we've talked about some of those people who are no longer here. I think of some of our sisters who've died rather recently. The last sister in our community who died was Sister Marianne Coase, and she was the person who established the media library at the Diocese of Youngstown. And uh, ever before we knew any language of database, she created a database in her brain of everything that was ever collected in that library. If you were a teacher in a Catholic school or a parish director of religious education, you could look at the catalog, or you could just call Mary Ann, and she would tell you what to do. I think of Sister Isabel, who grew up at St. Columba Parish and started at the Girls' Academy and then spent the last 20 so years of her life working, serving the people at St. Columba Parish. But I also remember the stories and the memories of people who have died longer ago than Sister Marianne or Sister Isabel. I think of Sister Winifred, who was one of the great English teachers at Ursuline High School. I think of Sister Ann Lynch, who was one of the great math teachers, first at Ursuline and then at Cardinal Mooney. I think of Sister Teresa Winson, who served in leadership in our community. But in addition to leadership in the community, she was an educational leader. She and her brothers, actually, were educational leaders in Youngstown for many, many decades. I think of Sister Immaculata, who taught at least two generations of first graders at St. Rose and Girard. Anybody from Girard who knows how to read knows because they learned from Sister Immaculata. I think of Sister Rosemary and Sister Alice Marie, who helped generations of high school students, high school students, to recognize the talent, the artistic talent, that they had no idea they even had. Now, I say those names, but as I do, the names and the faces of other people come into your mind. But this anniversary is not only about the past. It's also about the present and the future. One of the projects that uh, has just begun is a renovation of our mother house again. 
From the outside, the Ursula Mother House looks like it's looked since 1963. But inside, we've had several renovation projects, and the most recent began three weeks ago. We are in the process now of converting part of our space into an assisted living facility, one that would be licensed by the state of Ohio. Now, we already have 20 apartments for independent living seniors. And when this next uh, project is done, we will have 45 units that will be open for people who want to uh, be in assisted living. It'll be for our sisters, so our sisters can age in place. But in addition, we will welcome other seniors into this new assisted living so that they don't have to be very much alone in the world. All of you have been with us for many years as family, as friends, as associates, as co-workers. Please continue to be with us as we uh, take on this new project, as we continue to have our ministries thrive. We believe that the future is solid. It will be different. It's not 1960. It's not 1920. It's not 1874. Nevertheless, it is one that is faithful to the gospel values of Jesus, one that very deeply is rooted in the charism of St. Angela, and one that we hope will continue to provide for the needs of the people of Youngstown. I hope that you will continue to be with us as we continue this journey. Thank you. Sister Mary and Bridget Kennedy have asked me to elaborate on some of the points that, that Sister Mary talked about, the responsibility we now have as the Ursuline Sisters' mission moves forward. And I think that name, the Ursuline Sisters' mission, is very telling of the work that we have to do together. Since 1874, the Ursuline Sisters have poured themselves out in service to the local church, and the local community with little or no compensation. You heard Sister Mary say the median age of the sisters is now 80 and they need our help today. We hope to raise four million dollars to provide for the care of the sisters. There are 27 Ursuline sisters. While the sisters never fully retire from ministry, only four sisters are currently engaged in full-time paid work with three more receiving wages for part-time work. The other sisters average less than $500 per month in retirement income, which is far short of what is needed to provide for their care as they age. The National Religious Retirement Office estimates a shortfall of up to $10 million, some of which will be need to be raised through donations from supporters like all of us. <clears throat> the ministries of the sisters that they have created and their legacy ministries have had such an impact on all of us and on thousands of less fortunate people throughout our community and beyond. We want to ensure that this work will continue to thrive long into the future. We hope to raise $3 million for continued and expanded ministry. The Ursuline Sisters have worked in so many places where they have contributed to our education, supported our spiritual development, and perhaps provided pastoral care at critical moments in our lives. In addition to these roles in schools, parishes, hospitals, the sisters continue to live the gospel and the charism of St. Angela Marici through ministries like Beatitude House, the HIV AIDS ministry, the Ursuline Sisters Independent Living, and a myriad of other programs and projects focusing on wellness, education, and spirituality for all ages. Under the umbrella of the Ursuline Sisters' mission, and with our financial support, 
these ministries will continue to meet the needs of our community. Finally, the Mother House, you heard a little bit about their innovations, will allow the sisters to age in place and to open their home in ministry to more lay residents. Existing ministries need facility upgrades as well. We hope to raise $3 million for the capital needs of the Ursuline Sisters. And if you've been keeping track in your mind, this all totals about $12 million. <clears throat> the Sisters are making plans to turn part of the Mother House on Shields Road into an assisted living facility where both sisters and lay residents can find compassionate care in a vibrant, life-giving senior community. They first need to make major updates to the space, including the installation of a comprehensive fire suppression system and the repurposing of the administrative offices and other space to create more residential suites. Other ministry sites are overdue for safety upgrades. The full cost of these renovations will be $6 million, and we are hoping to raise half of that amount for the sisters. As we, as we reflect in the coming weeks and months on today's celebrations and the plans that the Ursulines have for the future, I am reminded of a passage from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will we reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having what you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. The Ursuline sisters sow bountifully, and with your assistance as cheerful givers, they will continue to reap bountifully, to have, to have abundance for every good work, so that we can sustain and steward these precious gifts they have bestowed upon us through their ministry as we carry this mission forward into the next century. Thank you all very much. I'd now like to welcome Monsignor Robert Sifrin to the podium for this evening's closing prayer. I'm very humbled to stand in the line of 150 years of pastors and rectors of St. Columba, where the Ursuline sisters first established their ministry. So in that profound spirit, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We give you thanks, almighty God, for 150 years of wonderful, loving, caring ministry of the Ursuline sisters, and the early sisters who brought the charism of St. Angela Marici to the Mahoning Valley. We are deeply grateful for what has been achieved to date, and we pray for those 194 sisters who have served our community and in the sign of faith have gone before us to the kingdom, and for the tens of thousands of men and women whom they've touched, leading them too into the joys of the kingdom of heaven. So in part of our prayer, we pray, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. They become part of the cloud of witnesses. And so we pray through the intercession of Mary, the angels and saints, and all of those holy men and women, the Ursulines and those whom they have served. May they pray for us as we support the work of the sisters today and as we lay the foundation for the next generation of their ministry that the Mahoning Valley will continue to be enriched by the charism of St. Angela Marici and the love and care of the women who have said yes to the call of God to serve God's people. And we ask all of this of you, almighty God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.